Hey, wouldn't it be cool if you bought your next car with the built-in ham radio controls? Well, we're going to talk about it more on Live Free and Ham tonight. Hello and welcome to a Live Free and Ham podcast. This is our bi-weekly show where we discuss ham radio topics in New Hampshire, New England, and beyond. Used to be global domination, but you know, we, we've cut back a little bit. Um, so whether you're a regular listener or first-time guest, we are excited to have you here and appreciate the support. And thanks for tuning in tonight's episode. So let's get into our show. I'm your host, as always, Eric, call sign N1JUR, and I'm with my co-host. Hey, it's Paul, N1OG. And Todd is uh, MIA tonight. He has had a long, uh, rough baseball weekend. So uh, he has uh, bowed out for this episode, but he will be here in spirit, and I will step in uh, as his uh, body stunt double for, uh, you know, uh, something extra with Todd, so I, I might, uh, you know, <laughs> it might crumble pretty fast. So we'll see how that one goes either way. All right. Well, you know, like I said, we are back at the helm. So, you know, we are in total command of our ship and we've changed all the codes and eliminated all that riffraff, you know, and maybe, you know, for those who are like, huh, what's he talking about? Well, you know, then you need to go back and watch the Ham Radio Clubhouse fellas. Uh, they came in and wrecked everything. You know, I don't know about you, Paul. What, what's your feeling on that one? But <laughs> we're still picking uh, up the pieces. They did a terrible job. They <laughs> they just they can't compete with us. You know. Yep, and they sold everything, which is good because that was all of our old merch. So you know, it clears the place, clears the plate for whole new stuff, and uh, you know, new series of shirts, which we'll have to commiserate uh, in uh, ham radio uh, clubhouse fashion. So those are soon to come, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, well, hopefully the hopefully the sales offset everything they gave away. Uh, we broke even, sadly, and I think I actually have to send them an extra bill for the cleanup of all the mess that they left of the extra beer cans and, uh, you know, <laughs> McDonald's wrappers. So <laughs> we shall see. She, Shane, we're coming for you. All right. Well, so to help uh, safeguard that whole process a little further, you can now find us in three different ways. Obviously, at livefreeandham.com. You can now catch us at Those Guys Up North and just a special new one that we just set up and it's a hundred percent available just for men like Carlos. So you can all <laughs> visit us at any one of those three links, find us in any corner of the world by uh, accessing that and come visit us at our, uh, our website, check out some of our stuff. But as always, before we get into our topic, we want to catch you up again on our storefront, livefreeham.com uh, forward slash shop. Um, we've got a bunch of new merch. Uh, we still have available if you want to get your fingers uh, on them is the limited run of the uh, the Ham Radio Clubhouse uh, takeover. Um, those shirts are still available. You can still pick those up. And if you happen to be watching the, the previous video, uh, there is a couple of discount codes in there. Uh, so you want to head over there and check those out if you want to save a little moolah on that. But you can go over there and pick up our limited run of the infamous hostile takeover shirt. Um, and I want to say thank you to the four or five people that uh, picked those up. Uh, Devin Anderson, Mike, N2MAK, our best bud friend. Uh, he's a, an official owner of the Hostile Takeover. Robert Koff, Jason Mary, and all of the others that purchased uh, and won uh, during our HRC live stream. They've got some sweet swag. Um, and I know Gray Man Poda, you know, uh, hopefully he is a, a listener now. He is uh, the winner of that uh, um, Mad Dog Coil. So hopefully, hopefully we will get a chance to see that on his, uh, you know, channel soon. So, uh, and again, we appreciate all of the help and, and all of the support and appreciate you guys picking up uh, Live Free and Ham gear and we hope you wear it proudly. So uh, with that, uh, you know, we also love feedback. And so you can always hit us up on our uh, Apple, um, you know, podcast and leave us a review there. But if you're not an Apple podcast listener, you can now sms text us and so we want to you know let you know we want to hear from you you can just go down to the bottom of our description there's a little sms link there um it's on all of our podcasts and it's in uh our youtube channel as well uh you can click there leave us a quick text tell us how much you love us hate us or you know you know tell us we need to get better day jobs i don't know you fill in the blank <laughs> it's your choice <laughs> but we want to hear from you either way so uh with that uh you know send us uh, send us feedback tell us how we're doing and um, as we always say, you know, we do a live stream once a month and we are coming up in August. Um, and actually, we're already here in August by the time this uh, airs. Um, and we'll be live streaming in the usual fashion. But this time we're going to make sure we have two fence verification on. We've got encryption. We've even hired a bouncer for the front door. So, you know, we're, I think we got all the bases covered. Um, and we're going to be having a special repeat guest on this week. 
Um, I, uh, we invited Mark uh, Halibut from Halibut Electronics back. He's going to come back, tell us a little bit about a couple of great things that are in store for us uh, as we um, are going to be talking probably uh, with him about Ham X. And so those are in the New England area. Ham X is coming up August 22nd through the 25th. Uh, the Live Free and Ham crew uh, will be there in and out. So make sure you come find us, look us up. Um, we'll be there hanging out, hopefully uh, doing some uh, live streaming um, and talking to folks. But, uh, you know, we, uh, we're we looking forward to that. Um, and so, you know, kind of to kick things off, uh, we're bringing Mark back and he's going to hopefully uh, kind of set the tone for us going forward uh, and uh, getting ready for uh, Ham X there. So um, make sure you keep an eye out on that and make sure if you haven't already clicked the subscribe and hit that notification bell and we'll make sure we notify you when we go live. All right. Well, let's kick off um, our usual streams here. Um, the first one is doing our do good. Good. Doing good. good. You do. That's good. Do good. Do good. You're doing good. 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 Absolutely, I do. Good. Good. I'm uh, doing good, Bob. Doing real good. And right now, my only outlet is my ham radio. Now. We do this segment every two weeks or roughly, even on a live show, we're starting to do that more. But, you know, again, the feedback loop is dried. I don't like, I don't know what it is, man. Like, it, apparently, we, it, we all suck as ham radio operators. We do absolutely nothing good. There's nobody has any time whatsoever to email us to say hello and even tell us, you know, that there's some great stuff going on in their club. Um, I don't know. How, how about you, Paul? You, have you run into any of that? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, it seems like uh, the Flag and Torch Society is the only club around that uh, wants to Apparently. let anybody know they're doing good. So, <laughs> Well, then, w shall we give you the floor then? You know, is there any other additional Flag and Torch stuff that you'd like to promote that, you know, is showing the good in ham radio? <laughs> no, I mean, nothing specific. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure we'll we'll be doing a testing session up again here uh, pretty soon. I think there's one scheduled for the 9th. Um, but otherwise, you know, I mean, uh, they're just a, a great club, w very welcoming to all uh, active and uh, veterans. Um, so if that fits your bill and uh, and you like radio, it, it might be a good place for you. Well, and, and you've got also another side venture there, too. So, like, put some uh, kudos there, you know, promote it a little bit, let them know about it. You know, go ahead. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, well, so there's a, yeah, the Weekend Warriors podcast. Uh, we're, we're three episodes in at this point. Um, it's a it's a great opportunity for active duty and veterans just to have conversations about uh, what's going on in their lives and what's uh, important to them. Uh, we kind of treat it like a, like an open discussion. Sometimes we have a topic that we'll stick to, but uh, a lot of times it's just us talking about what's on our mind. So um, I encourage anybody that wants to uh, take part in that to uh, hit us up on Discord, uh, Flag and Torch Society. Yeah, definitely. And you can always head over to Paul's channel, which are down in the, the show notes to check that out and uh, subscribe to his channel and you'll get updated when uh, Weekend Warriors kicks off and any of the cool videos Paul puts together. Uh, as I know he kind of infrequently, he probably puts out more videos than Shane does on his usual schedule, which is every 12 to 24 months. I think Paul's a little bit ahead of that curve there. So, you know, you, you can always check out some good stuff there. <laughs> Just a bit. Yeah, no, exactly right. <laughs> I think it's the magic radio, though. Once you bought the magic radio, you took all of uh, Shane's, uh, you know, <laughs> ability to record videos. Um, so, well, okay. I, I hope I hope that I got all his mojo with the radio. Uh, me too. I mean, a good radio and the stickers in a perfect location. <laughs> it's like you saying that. All right. Well, so with this next episode, since our lovely uh, Todd is um, uh, away and um, not uh, here with us, I will be stepping in, like I mentioned, as his uh, stunt double. So we're going to kick off our next uh, segment called... And now for something a little extra with Todd W1STJ. All right. Well, we are rolling into, yep, the where Todd, uh, a.k.a. Eric, uh, who is Ori and Extra. <laughs> I should put that in my subtitle here. Uh, I'm helping Todd and by stepping in and taking his Extra Class license so we can test his knowledge through me <laughs> vicariously. I know it's weird. Uh, and we hope maybe, you know, through my mess up, he'll get his uh, upgrade. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, you know, so if you'd like to follow along, you can always head over to hamstudy.org. 
which is a great resource to help you prepare for your test and is recommended by three out of four volunteer examiners because the American Dental Association was unavailable for comment when we took the survey. So without any further delay, we will hand it over to you, our lovely VE Quizmaster. Go ahead, take it away. Paul, hammer me hard. <laughs> Wait, don't. It, it, that just came out wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know, I just noticed, uh, for those that can see the video, that this layout is is really nice. We should have been using. This I know, the whole right? Time. Right. So <laughs> we should. We'll just have to kick. We'll have to kick myself to the the you know <laughs> the green room every time. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you know, we learn something new every episode. So <laughs> let's kick right. this mess off. All right. Question number one from sub element number one because Todd wants the easiest questions. So here you go. <laughs> Under what circumstances might the FCC issue a special temporary authority, a.k.a. STA, to an amateur station? A, to allow a VE group with less than three VEs to administer examinations in a remote, sparsely populated area. B, to provide for experimental amateur communications. C, to allow use of a special event call sign, or is it D, to allow a licensee who has passed an upgrade exam to operate with upgraded privileges while waiting for the posting on the FCC database? Ooh, wow, man, that was a close one there. Um, hmm. Oh, one, one I, correct answer. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I, I was originally going to go with C, but I'm going to go with D because I think that's uh, you know a better fit for that type of question. Oh, all right. I now see. I was going to say B. So let's see who's right. Ah, oh, oh, it's not you. <laughs> it's it's B. Oh my it's gosh. It's me. <laughs> Well, you are a V, so I would hope you have those like tattooed on the back side of your arm, front side of your arm, <laughs> I have the back side of my eyelids. Every time yeah, I close my everywhere. eyes, it's just V E questions. It's, you go to sleep thinking V E questions. This is the way it goes. <laughs> All right. All right well, uh, number failure. two. <laughs> Which of the following geographic descriptions approximately describes line A? Now you're going to have to think about where line A is, but is it A, a line roughly parallel to and south of the border between the U.S. and Canada, B, a line roughly parallel to and north of the border between U.S. and Mexico, C, a line roughly parallel to and east of the U.S. Pacific coastline, or is it D, a line roughly parallel to and west of the U.S. Atlantic coastline. So where around the oh. U.S. is line A? You know, uh, it's it's one of those things that it sort of makes me think that we're looking at. Oh, man, is that the is is line A Canada and U.S.? Why does that seem to stick with me? I know we had this conversation or I've heard it somewhere. Yeah, we're going to go with We've a. definitely had this conversation. Yeah, we're going to go with A. A is correct. Yeah, woohoo! All right, something sticks. <laughs> I'm not getting as old as I thought. <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All so right. I pat myself on the back. <laughs> For the third and final question, which VHF amateur bands have frequencies authorized for space stations? Is it A? Two meters and 1.25 meters. B, six meters, two meters, and 1.25. C, two meters only. Or D, six meters and two meters. Uh, well, Alex, I am almost positive. I think it is the C because I don't think any of the other bands offer anything else. So I'm going to go with C. You are correct. Ooh. C it is. So two out of three ain't bad. No, yeah, no, dude. I, I, you know, I pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, 
you're welcome, Todd. That's all I have to say. <laughs> you know, that's 70% pretty much at this way. I look at it. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, my, my train wreck of an attempt here, it wasn't too bad. You know, I can actually put my head on my pillow tonight and know that I am still an extra. <laughs> so <laughs> it's always a good thing. They can't take away my privileges or at least the FC currently, unless they have a <laughs> legit reason why, but we won't go into it. Um, and so if you're on the journey to studying for your technician general or extra class like Todd, um, you can go to hamstudy.org as it is an excellent resource for getting your ticket and we want to know if you've recently received your license or you've been upgraded you know let us know we want to celebrate when your hard effort and your work um so just send us a quick email at livefreeandham at gmail.com and we'll make sure we mention you on the show and give you some props so with that you know as always um we uh, thank you guys for tolerating our torture <laughs> I know, I know we almost got lynched on the ham radio clubhouse because we ran our regular show and they're like, what the hell is this crap? <laughs> and so we survived. We came that's, out that's of That's a drinking uh, podcast. Yeah, the, exactly. Right. That, that's all that podcast is. I mean, they, <laughs> and maybe a little ham radio. I think we overkilled them with ham radio that we lost a lot of people. They're like, what, why are they talking about ham radio? All right. Well, anyway, so <laughs> in our usual format, we're going to talk, uh, you know, uh, how's your ham radio, Paul? What's, what, what's been going on? Any ham radio at all? Uh, yeah, well, so this week has been tough. Uh, there's been a lot of solar activity, a lot of um, X-class, uh, M-class oh, players, yeah. uh, CMEs. <laughs> there was a, <laughs> a, a cannibal CME because I guess there was um, like three that uh, all kind of came out together. And so the one just ate the other two. <laughs> and it created a much bigger blast uh, right at us. Um, uh -huh. n noticeably rough band conditions. Like, I mean, I'm talking S9 plus six noise floor. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy for uh, for a good majority of the week. But um, uh, I was able to make a few contacts here and there. Uh, actually, last night it was it was really cool. There was a guy uh, in Virginia driving to Louisiana. And okay. so he was operating HF while he was driving on the highway wow. on the 20, 20 meter band. And I had him, you know, it, it granted, I mean, at S9 noise floor and I had him about six over, you know, so I was what? able to make him out nice and clear. Wow. And we had a, we had about a half hour, a little rag chew. And, and, uh, I said, listen, <laughs> it's, it's one thirty in the morning. Uh, I'm, I'm done with my video editing. I just need to go to bed. I wish you all the best. Have a safe drive. <laughs> But I thought I thought it was really cool that he was he was running portable uh, that far south and yeah it was oh, nice dude. and clear. That that that's like I, I'm getting one step closer. I'm almost done. I finally finished my plethora of 3D prints and finally got everything narrowed down and got the right base set for my car. So I'm now like eighty well I'd say about ninety percent ready to record the videos so I can get HF in the truck and I'm looking. Oh, I can't wait till I have HF in the truck. That I mean, I'm like at that point, you know, I just want to start playing a little HF when I go out and you know fool around, or when you know the wife's in the store, you know, just the simple stuff, just to enjoy the pleasures of that. And then you know, uh, my benefits of going to a poda park. I mean, like, dude, I can just pull up and you know power up HF, and I'm off to the races. So, yeah, I'm gonna be enjoying doing that soon. But uh, yeah, cool. You know, so th that is a perfect example, dude. Like, even though the conditions sucked, what'd you do? Terrible. Yep. Yeah. Terrible. Still you play, play radio. radio though. Play radio, dude. Don't give up. You know, you, yep. you might not be pulling contacts like, uh, you know, every three a second or, you know, like, uh, you know, a madman in a contest, but, uh, you know, the contacts you do make, man, they're quality. <laughs> That's the way they work. <laughs> oh, got to give a shout out to, to, um, Steve, um, KO4 AFL. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, uh, I was having issues with my, uh, remote setup and oh. our, our rc4 wasn't working it was rejecting everybody um and he he jumped on zoom with me uh yesterday morning and in about an hour we had all the problem resolved and nice so yeah so big shout out to him i got my my remote station back up very cool very cool and enough so shane could get in there and he can get off of steve's station right <laughs> <laughs> although i'm not sure i'm not sure he'll he'll like it so much because uh I, mine doesn't rotate I, all right exactly you don't have a big giant uh you know uh beam up on the roof uh you know <laughs> pulling multi-band off of it you know and he's got an amplifier too right from last i heard so <laughs> you know you have a little yeah. competition but not much i mean heck you know you're running a kilowatt he's only five so 
there is say something for that <laughs> oh yes full power is full power Yep, that is for sure, especially coming in from the barefoot community over here. So, all right, well, for me, um, man, I'm trying to get my bearings. Like we said, it's been a while. I know I've been on some vacations on and off here. Uh, so my ham radio weeks, um, I ended up actually getting a chance to go activate again. Um, I took my daughter with me. Um, yeah, her and her, uh, you know, she, she came, brought her art book, but I didn't understand why. So we brought the dog in tow, went up to Mount Aggie in, in York, Maine. Um, and it's right around the, you know, I think it was a G3 storm right around that week too. And I knew kind of going in it, uh, that I was going to be like, uh, you know, the bands aren't going to be great. I'll be lucky if I pulled 10, I think I pulled like 35 contacts in about eh, almost an hour and a half, but, uh, I was always presented and actually I still have it over here. Um, my daughter thought she'd be funny because I was still doing a recording. I, and actually two things came out of it. And I wish I wrote this woman's call down, but to, to talk about what my daughter left me, I'm sitting there on this and she put this in front of me. <laughs> and so I'm in the middle of, you know, recording the video. So uh, I'll have a video launched on the Tuesday night taco, uh, you know, ham radio clubhouse playlist, you know, we'll check it out and you can see your little antics there. Um, but I didn't have the camera running. I was kind of bummed. I ran into a couple, actually, I was, I was just starting to set up when I got there and it was already overcast and, and it was kind of a rainy day in general. So I was like, this is going to be a short activation. And this couple came over with their two girls and, um, she was off in the distance. And the only thing she said in the office, she's like soda. And I'm like, no, no, thanks. I don't need anything. And she's like, no, no, you're doing soda. And I'm like, no, I'm doing a pona. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, I thought you were like offering something. And she was like, she's like, no, no, no. She's like, what's, what's poda. And I'm like, my jaw dropped. I'm like, you, right. What? How do you know po about you, soda not, and not poda? Exactly. My, my thought exactly. I'm like, you've never done po like, you don't know what poda is. She's like, no, I'm like, Oh, well, I've got something for you here. And of course, I would have thought her husband was also a ham. Nope. No ham whatsoever. I mean, he was like two left thumbs. Couldn't like hold the microphone the right way type thing. He was asking like the very basic questions like what, what's radio? What's this in the thing over here? This standing up, you know, 14 feet in the sky, you know, that type of stuff. And, and so once he realized when she came over and she introduced herself, she gave me her call sign and her name. And I totally forgot. I, I, I somehow must've stopped the recording in the midst of it because she was just like, and then, like she's like oh i've got an a57 and i do you know this is what i run for she's like she was lugging around like a, a almost like a lead acid battery but something smaller i'm like no no and she, you know, i'm like wow that's the <laughs> that's a lot of weight there especially doing soda and you know so we started showing her a little bit of the a91 and the setup and and she i gave her my stickers so I, she hasn't hit me up i'm always hoping she would like you know hit her hit me up on my uh, channel or something like that so hopefully she's a listener and if you if she is maybe uh, if she recalls that conversation she can you know, send, uh, you know, uh, us, uh, an SMS text there, you know, let us know because I want to make sure I get your call sign right and give you kudos because it was a blast talking with you. It kind of made the whole entire, um, activation that much smoother and fun to actually, you know, see another ham there who was, you know, new to the POTA world. I was like, Oh, cool. This is something, you know, I want to, you know, get her more involved in. And she's, she goes to the lakes region, um, club, uh, and I can't remember what their club name is, but, uh, and again, I, I'm bad with names first time out. So, I didn't write any of it down and I feel bad for it, but uh, it was a good contact. And so hopefully, you know, she, uh, she digs us up and uh, learns a little bit more of us, but, you know, love to, you know, talk to her more. And, and, you know, we're actually sometime in September, I think, putting together a YLs episode. So, uh, you know, maybe we could have her on. It'd be kind of cool. So either way. So that was kind of my radio, you know, ham radio week in a nutshell. So, you know, some POTA, good contacts, but, uh, you know, bad, uh, bad bank additions for sure. All right. Well, so this leads us up to uh, Todd. We don't know what he's, his hammer deal week is. It's probably filled with baseball. So <laughs> Todd, you can fill it in the comments below. Um, and so with that, let's kind of get into our topic tonight. And so tonight's topic is a little bit of a special one. Um, we had a listener submitted question. So yes, you, the listener can submit questions for us to have, you know, conversations about topics. This one came into our inbox and and I was like, oh, wow, that's a really good topic. This one, uh, the, the contact is Jim Rice. And no, he's not with a baseball player, no matter how much we really want. You know, <laughs> I, I looked him up to make sure his call sign and name were correct. Uh, this is KE4LXK. Um, and he submitted a question to us that says, why doesn't uh, the majority of manufacturers, Yezu, Icom, et cetera, make way to utilize screens inside of new vehicles to operate a radio? I have a new 2023 Tacoma with a great screen. And for example, plenty of complaints about the A57D screen, which we all know it's like the size of a quarter. Um, 
and all the buttons, they're always complicated in Yezu menus. We all know, and we'll get into it a little bit. They are, you know, somewhat complicated to, to navigate. If you haven't, you know, been in that interface, if you're an icon person like Paul is, and, you know, he'll contest that, you know, Yezu can be a pain sometimes. Um, you know, and he's asking, well, wouldn't it be cool if we put it on a screen or, you know, integrated it into the vehicle as kind of a vehicle, you know, one screen touch pane of glass display type thing. And it kind of got me thinking. And I'm like, well, you know, why don't we talk a little bit about that? Like, what the heck? Like, you know, maybe this might be a kickoff for manufacturers to get their heads out of the 1990s and realize that, you know, hey, this is the 21st century. We spend a lot of time in our cars. You know, we all have some infotainment system in some form or fashion. Why, why can't we integrate in that? What, what's so hard to you know, make a black box or some interface or some piece of software to be able to control that radio you spent like $500 on that, you know, you have to mount up above your dash so you can see it because you don't want to get into an accident when you're trying to switch a simple band or, you know, whatever the case. So, so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight and, you know, share our thoughts on it. And, you know, hopefully it will spur a little bit of discussion. We'll open it up in the, the, the show uh, on our Discord. So if you haven't been over to our Discord, uh, the show link is in our description uh, and show notes below. So head over there. Let us know, well, you know what would you love to see stuff, but you know, we'll talk about it. And if you've got some opinions on it, we want to hear and, and keep the conversation going. But so, you know, Paul, l tell me, you know, what what's your struggles? Would do you do you see this as a benefit? You know, either in the latest cars of today, or like in you know at the aftermarket in that sense. Like, would you like to see some of that integration? Like, or are you just like, hey, I keep my radio and 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 FM radio separate? You know, church and state don't mix. Well, so. Uh... You know, when I read the email, I was I was really intrigued because it's it's a it's an interesting thought, um, and and I don't know necessarily that it should be left up to the manufacturers, you know, mm, Yacy yeah. or Icom, but perhaps a uh, you know a third party software, you know, could could find a better, easier, better solution, um, right. you know. But so I drive an I drive an 07 uh, Tundra. Uh, I've done so many modifications to the truck uh i got you know 250,000 miles on it i've driven it cross country i up and down the east coast every year so you know i mean i i definitely spend a lot of time in my truck um the radio that i've got in the truck as we've all talked about before uh is the asu it's the ftm 400 xdr uh and it's literally mounted right above my steering wheel so it's right mm -hmm. in my face uh nighttime it, it, even on its dimmest setting it's kind of too bright um i had bought an uh a, an upgraded radio uh, you're probably going back uh like a like an f six ten wood touch type radio right yeah like a truck radio or a car radio right? uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, okay. uh, stereo <laughs> i should say yeah, right okay. yeah, yeah right yeah um you know but it was a touch screen with a dvd player and navigation built in and everything and 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 it was really nice for a while but it, you're going back probably about eight years and it and it died uh, about six months ago. Like the the radio is just kaput. Stereo, mm -hmm. the, the stereo is kaput. <laughs> um, so I've been looking at other options, uh, you know, that would suit more needs than just playing music. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that's uh, that's fairly common online with my generation of the Toyota Tundra is they uh, they make a seven inch, almost like a tablet display. Mm -hmm. that that goes in place of of the stereo and so everything is then controlled from the tablet and so if there was uh you know an android application that i could then install and run a cable to my radio and get rid of the display completely off my dash and control right. everything right from the app you know like a like a wf view or you know any of those types of softwares but in an app form that mm -hmm. would be really really neat yeah, I, I would agree. Like, I would think, you know, and, and uh, we'll, we'll get clear the air pretty quickly here for me. Like, I I look at, like, the manufacturers today, and I see Icom, Yezu, and, Ken, well, let's put Kenwood in the mix. They aren't even kind of in the, the, the mobile game per se anymore, but maybe they might get there. But, um, you know, if you look at those manufacturers and you say, like, okay, well, yeah, they have all of these great touch, like, somewhat touch interfaces, like the FTM 500, the FTM 400 for Yezu, icom's menuing system they built a platform a software platform and then bolted it on top of their radios for the purposes of simplicity and control so whether you go from hf to vhf uhf 
all of them pretty much are the same. You know, menus obviously a little different based off of bands and the flexibility of that stuff. But like finding the menu controls, going through navigation, you could literally would go in with one eye and one arm time behind your back and know how to operate the you know interface, no matter what's a ninety seven hundred or seventy six ten or seventy three hundred, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're familiar with one of those radios, you can pick up any of them and you're mm-hmm. good to go. Yeah. Whereas you go into the Yezu world for me, I have a DX10. I had a, well, we can't put the 450 in there because they didn't have a, you know, large display, but a, a, or an FTM 300. They are night and day to each other. They don't, they the don't talk the same. Yeah, 991. They don't talk the same. They don't look the same. That you know, I mean, granted, the 710 and the the DX10 are sort of cut co- like close cousins to each other, but their menus are just a little tad different, you know. But there's never a forethought like, hey, we're gonna do software first, and then you know, let that talk to the hardware. They were like, we're gonna have hardware first, and then let our software be secondary, which in my mind is like a 1980s, you know, 90s, you know, philosophy of uh, you know, hardware first and software, you know, last of a you know afterthought because we have to have something to control the radio. Um, but to be able to take, like you said, like a software app, I always kind of envision, like, we, uh, I look at my, I, I drive a, a 18, uh, Ram, you know, 15, half ton, and I've got that 10 inch display on it. Love it. I mean, but the, 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 the display and, and some of it is, it's very like specific to the manufacturer and that's how they did it. That's how they built their interface. Fine. But, you know, it would be awesome. And it's sort of like how I have with my, as you described, the Android ecosystem or the Apple ecosystem. Like when I plug my phone in, guess what? All of a sudden I get my Apple interface and all of my apps and everything that I'm used to in the app world for, you know, my experience. Well, why can't I have that with like the radio? Why can't I be like that, you know, instead of that stupid mini DIN connector on the back for the 300 that does zero of, you know, anything. It's not even a TNC per se. You can't even use it for anything. Why can't I have a USB port whether it's B, I don't care, or A, or even C. C would be miraculous, but let's just not, you know, go up that, you know, down that road. Be able to plug the radio in, have my Uconnect system say, oh, I've got an app. Let's just install that and launch it. Or, you know, go to the app store and pull it down. And now I can do it from my, you know, from my phone and from the Uconnect Apple ecosystem, control the radio and see my A channel, my B channel, the little like quick program buttons that I have at the bottom that I can all touch and I can just go in through like if I want to see my well I'll call a phone book or my channels be able to select a channel just while I'm driving and touching the screen because I can see still eye level and I'm a little bit more safer than if I'm looking down at my radio even though my head you know unit is right up on like yours is up on the dash I still have to like look away and look at the unit to figure out what button's going to get me where and thank God I have knobs because I can turn the volumes up or down versus having to press. Imagine having to press a volume button like up. That would just kill me. I'd be like, okay, the radio is just going. I'm, I'm vaulting it out the window. It's as simple as that. But having all of those move to the controls of like the dash, freaking phenomenal. Like, dude, that would be awesome. Be like, I would be able to have 100% ham radio in my truck driving my wife totally 100% nuts because there's nothing else but ham radio in this truck. And so she can't touch the controls. She can't <laughs> modify them. Anymore. And I can control like the radio through Bluetooth and, you know, my hands free, you know, steering wheel controls, all of those cool things. Like that would be phenomenal if they could get their heads out of their butts and figure out how to make software around that. That would be like the bomb. I would spend bazillions of dollars to just buy, you know, a VHF and UHF head unit that was available to me. I don't know. What do you think about that? So, um, as, as we're talking about it, right. It, I mean, it's, it's got my wheels turning and I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, somebody would have to come up with like, uh, the, the OHIS kind of theory of things where it's mm-hmm. a, it's a universal in between because you're talking about integrating with several different major auto manufacturers plus the radio <laughs> yeah. manufacturers. Right. <laughs> and, and to be fair, um, you, ideally, I think you would want this interface unit to, to have a sound card built in. So that way you mm-hmm. could take radios that don't have sound cards and make them <laughs> nice. compatible through maybe that. like a, yeah. you know, a, a, one of those little tiny cube computer things that you would have yeah. installed in your dash or something. Right. Like, I mean, I, I I'm sure there's, there's a million different uh, solutions to this that I'm, that I'm thinking of, and I'm sure that somebody out there who is a hell of a lot more smarter oh, than yeah. i am yeah they're like oh <laughs> i could do that uh-huh yeah <laughs> well hopefully they're like, watching 
<laughs> right, exactly. If you are watching, let's have a conversation because we can do a brain dump together and give you everything you'd probably think to want to build in your interface. But like this would solve my number one complaint. You know, uh, I love the guy, but K murder, always a big anti APRS person, like because it's so difficult to build. It, not even K murder, um, KM4ACK. He complains about the Yazoo interfaces being able to text. And I'm with him 100%. I don't disagree. But like being able to, like, oh, all of a sudden on that now software display on my dash, press the, hey, I want to reply to that APRS text. Now I can be like, oh, engage the voice and say, blah, 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 blah. And it translates my voice into the APRS text. And then I can press the button on the screen if I want, or even say in my voice command, send the message, and it will send the message via APRS. And now it's gone over the APRS RF Neo network. And, you know, I feel much cooler because I'm actually using a technology that's, you know, lockstep with the, the technology that we all pay for on a daily, you know, monthly basis with our cell bills. But, you know, well, and it's keeping you safer on the road, you know, oh, totally. You're, you're, totally. you're not having to, you know, fiddle with knobs and buttons like you can voice voice command it like mm -hmm. you know, that would be amazing. Yeah, that that'd be the one big thing I think out of the gate would be awesome to be able to do all of that. But more so like imagine being able to actually just program a frequency like, you know, how you do with your current radios today like, or your stereos today, you just hold the button or press it firmly. And now it saves the memory in the channel. It's not like I have to hold this button and this function key to be able to get it to save the menu. <laughs> it's just like a matter. Hey, I want to tune this like when, you know, Todd gives me, a, you know, you should check out this repeater. I can go in and it's like program the repeater in by just punching in the numbers and it knows the offset can calculate it automatically. And then, hey, I want to save it to memory six. I'll save it to memory six. And, you know, it will make, uh, you know, that much uh, that much more of the experience for me, like so much like way freaking easy. Like, I don't like it's just so mind boggling. Why? Why do we have to like play in 1980s? Like when it comes to our radios, like, do you, do you feel that way? <laughs> well, I think what it is, right, is there's. It, there's all these different advancements in the technology and mm -hmm. that people need to come together. Right. So mm -hmm. like ICOM with their, their feature where you can scan and it'll pick up the, the local repeaters and, oh, and yeah, real right. tones and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. So th that feature needs to be shared on all yeah. the radios. <laughs> oh yes. Hey, get rid of this. Right. You know, right. Put Bluetooth. Crap. <laughs> oh, Put Bluetooth yes. Don't get in me all going. the radios. Oh my god! Right? Holy crap! Like, yeah, a standard of Bluetooth that is used a while the world, not like a half baked version like Yezu does. Ugh. Yeah, it's so frustrating that the FTM four hundred has Bluetooth <sighs> capability. I I bought the module. I put the module in to just to have the Bluetooth capabilities, but then it it only works with like certain stupid looking little tiny earpieces, mm -hmm. and no that's yep. not convenient while i'm driving like i i wanted it to connect straight to my freaking radio my 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 stereo bluetooth yeah. right that would be awesome yeah <laughs> that would be freaking awesome that would be a step in a, like the right direction first step i mean alone just to be able to have your radio go hey connect as a device and now i can hear it through the stereo and i don't have to crank up the volume all the time on the radio to hear something that would be phenomenal yeah. but nope uh-uh not gonna happen <laughs> no because they have to they have to meet the marine you know and the uh, you know police force i'm like they would probably love to have that feature too like why aren't you like charging them a you know a premium and then selling it to us cheaper i mean that like <laughs> yeah it gets yeah, me aggravated I'm, every minute municipality i'm sure would be super appreciative to have bluetooth radio to their car stereos oh like, yeah like hands-free while they're driving while they're you know having a type in license plates and do other you know police things mm -hmm. or fire things like yeah that's just that it, it makes sense no just do it yeah we need to have john crook on and just you know grill him hard about like how we we can't stand why we're just like being sold the bill of goods that just sucks you know and, but do it in a nice way i guess i don't know we'll have to figure out how we do the nice way part but <laughs> i i know a few folks have had him on and you know they, they've done an, a, an okay job but i think you know we could hit them hard better because we don't have to worry about sponsorships. We're so young. We're so small. <laughs> we're not, we're not monetized. We're, we're not, not monetized either. So, it. you know, we, we can drop whatever <laughs> we want for F bombs too. So yeah. I'm, oh, well, yeah, that is my frustration. But like, I mean, obviously there's a lot of technical things, but I think the only way to like, as we all know, like, we, like we're talking with Mark at Halibut Electronics, he's, he's similar to that same tinker. He'll build like solutions that, you know, interface to the manufacturers because the manufacturers won't do it for whatever reason or just don't have the budgets to do it. Um, 
you know, but like having like his, like you mentioned, the OHIS and those that don't know what OHIS is a uh, open headset interconnect standard, which is kind of that open standard. So thinking in those terms, like it would be cool if there was this, we'll call radio interface standard, RIS, or you, you name whatever you want to call it. And it's like, that's what like every manufacturer just connects to. So it passes whatever information it needs to, whatever method, cables, whatever connection to this little black box. And you buy this little black box. And that little black box has the interface to your said vehicle because we know the vehicle manufacturers aren't going to be like, oh, that ham radio uh, market. We need, we need to get involved in that quickly because they're, you know, a big space. I mean, we're like a small little drop in the pond to the bigger, you know, I mean, as it is that what the Tesla is fighting against hard with removing AM out of their vehicles. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> what do you think they're going to be putting ham radio in? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it, it's, it's, that's a that's a shame. Like, I mean, AM radio is still fantastic for a lot of a lot of different things. Well, and you heard their reason why, right? No, not at all. Their reason why is AM causes too much interference to their oh, electronics geez. in the car. Is yeah, that a safety issue? They definitely issue. don't want a radio then. <laughs> that 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 they're that they're that AM would be messing up all of their safety features and functionality. I'm like. Really? Like we've had AM in cars for a while and you've been throwing more safety features at those left and right. Like, and they haven't failed. You think all of those accidents are related directly to AM ban because I turned my AM radio on and all of a sudden like, oh, my car got into an accident. It's driving it's self-driving. It's going to crash into the truck in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Because you yeah. were listening, you were receiving <laughs> AM radio, not even I know. transmitting it. Sure, really. I know exactly. Uh. <laughs> so bizarre. So, yeah, I mean, having a black box, it, this would be phenomenal. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to be pioneering this because, in essence, I just have way too much on my plate. But if there's somebody out there, like Paul mentioned, that, you know, has the time, has, you know, deep pockets and doesn't mind tinkering with electronics and coming up with that interface, this would be one thing that I think from the ham radio community as a whole would both be a safety plus, but a great feature to be able to have you know, that capability where I can take whatever radio I have, as long as it meets that, you know, and again, this is the problem with some of the older radios that we all face now. It's like, you can't get stuff out of them because they're so la locked, like the Apple ecosystem. I mean, Paul's loving it when I say that, but um, you know, <laughs> it's very much like Yezu is like, Hey, you can't get into that radio unless you get in there hardcore and solder right directly to the board. I mean, that's like your only option. And 90% of us probably aren't going to do that for the fact of voiding warranties if we you know, still had a warranty on the radio. But, you know, like uh, uh, an example of um, there, I have a Yezu, was it a 450? Yeah, I have an FT450 and there's a new display that I can actually put a full uh, spectrum scope tied to it. I just have to tie in the IF filter. Well, you have to solder the IF into the, the specific space on the board for the IF filter. It's like in the toughest place possible to get at it. And I'm like, well, then that's just going to cross me off the list because I can barely, like my soldering is crap in general, but like, you know, me trying to solder, I'm going to probably solder to five other connectors that are already on that board and <laughs> catch the 450 on fire. But, you know, yeah, it's, you, it's, need, you need a, you need a workbench with a, you know, microscope and a, mm -hmm. you know, super fine tip, you know, for, for doing the, the, uh, you know, service mount stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. That's beyond the average person, mm -hmm. I think. And, and myself for sure. So yeah, I mean, to have a black box, I think would be an ultimate design. So I, I think, I, I, well, so we should ask really the question in general to kind of answer uh, um, Jim's you know, point. It's like, do we ever think manufacturers are going to get to that point? Like, will they ever allow a, you know, a common interface? Yeah. No, I think, I, I think it has to be a third party. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where you're going to end up with something that's either uh, Windows, Linux, or Android-based. Because yep. sorry, Apple, but you're all proprietary and fuck you. <laughs> like. uh, I'll agree with you on that. Although the it is it is getting slightly better in terms of being able to uh, re release some of the hardware side of things, which I'm hoping in the next couple of years we'll start to see more of that. At least from the developer conference and stuff that I've seen um, or them hinting to, they're starting to allow more of that. And again, it's because security and that's where their stance is. So I get it. I understand. I mean, heck we were hacked. So, you know, well, who are we? <laughs> we're a small little lowly show. And, you know, our, our, our password of monkey one, two, three is now monkey four, five, six, for those that might want to try. Um, exclamation point. <laughs> exclamation point. Exclamation point. Exactly. Right. Two exclamation points. <laughs> There's the difference. And a capital M. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things that's like, I would love to be able to have those capabilities, but I know 
like you said, third party is going to be the way to be. And so, you know, maybe there is, you know, I, I know there are obviously tinkers out there because we've got like, you know, like I mentioned before, spe full spectrum scopes to like you know, radios that don't have that capability that now are software driven and they're small little Android, you know, kind of four inch screen, you know, that you can attach to your radio and, and those things are pretty sweet. I mean, they, they offer all of this functionality, pull all the, the data that, you know, you need off the radio that you would normally get on a larger, more expensive radio, but now is, is better. And, you know, even look at like things like the FX4 CR. I mean, that's, that's a full software, pretty much radio. I mean, there's a, like the you know, hardware involved in it, but it's not like a proprietary platform. I can go in and tinker and tweak that if I wanted to and make something a little different. You know, I'm not held to, you know, the manufacturer's warranty standards. Oh, well, maybe, but I don't know. I'm sure he wouldn't care either way if I was improving upon the platform, but. I'm sure uh, what it's going to come down to, right, is is it's going to be a ham with some, some ham genuity. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to come up with, you know, one of those little tiny box computers running, you know, Linux, Linux or some, some type of uh, operating system with a sound card attached. And, and the key here, right, is if you use the 891 as your start, your first radio. Yep. Right. Very popular. Yep. Look at how many people run POTA and they've got an 891. And to have the ability to take that same radio and instead of being outside the vehicle, plug it right in directly to this interface and have it come up on your display. So yep. you can have the radio sitting off to the side and you can just sit and you can log and you can do everything right there. And the first version, I wouldn't even care if you didn't have a spectrum scope either. Like that would be a bonus if you could have that capability of being able to, you know, do the same thing we do on the larger HF gear. But, you know, not even having that, but having just the capability to be able to do everything from the radio, um, you know, minus some of the challenges, I think, and one of the things that popped in my head was like, I already have a big RF um, noise issue with my truck in general, if I'm running, you know, uh, accessory not, or not in accessory mode, or even with the accessory switch on, I hear a nice little hum on my 891 on HF on 20 and 15, and sometimes 40, but I haven't done 40 much on the truck. Um, and I know it's probably a grounding issue. It's probably poor, you know, wiring and, you know, all of the other stuff that they chose not to do at the factory, you know, but that would also require a lot more manufacturers to clean up like a lot of the RFI and, and other stuff, because I'm sure the radios would definitely be, uh, you know, especially with that third party box in the middle of it, be prone to picking up a lot more, you know, RFI and your noise floor and your truck might be an S9 <laughs> plus 60 over. <laughs> Well, you would, I mean, you would think that the auto manufacturers at this point, like everything is so computerized that they would have some type of RF protection, you know, just e even for the basic, you know, <laughs> your, mm -hmm. your, your, you know, <laughs> CPU that runs everything in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, why they don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah, why they don't is because, uh, you know, every dollar they can squeeze out of the vehicle that they can save on their own to make on the profit end is why they do it. But, you know, and if it uh, ever becomes a, an, uh, you know, a, a recall situation, then they'll fix it. But, uh, you know, nine times out of 10, that's just kind of the struggle. And I think that's kind of why, you know, uh, maybe that's why we haven't heard anything in that that space where, you know, the, well, we all know that every every manufacturer is a closed system. There's you know, they're not the same no matter what I like. The only thing, any, anybody who has any penetration is Apple and Android. That's just kind of the, the market share that they were faced with. They had to install those because there was a big people, a big user base already saying, I want to have Android control. I want to have Apple control in my truck. Get, you know, get with the program. And so, you know, once they finally succumbed to that, then they started making their interfaces a little bit better. But, you know, it's still, they're not going to open it up. They're not going to create an open standard because, you know, God forbid, it, you know, if they had an open standard, you know, the hackers would be having a heyday and they'd be like, hey, I got to take over all the Teslas and watch, you know, what we do. Not that Tesla would ever allow anybody to touch their software whatsoever. But, you know, any of the big ones like Dodge or, you know, Ram or, you know, Toyota. Yeah, or it, it would be the, the new Kia boys. <laughs> pretty much that we will have to buy, we'll all have to buy kias and then you'll be hams will be identified by them driving not because the antennas in their car but by driving a kia <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it. and the antennas too but you know that would be the second thing you notice <laughs> oh man yeah it, it's 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 a bummer but i you know that's kind of one of the things i think with the hobby that i struggle with a lot is like we are still in that battle of you know 
uh, ultimate control and ultimate you know dominance in terms of interfaces and nobody sharing everyone thinks there's their 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 shit's proprietary and their shit's better than the next guy which is kind of sad because their market space is already small enough you know uh, i get the fact that they're pinching pennies but at the same time it's like they should be playing you know in a better space where like i don't have to worry about codex i don't have to worry about proprietary design or desires because they're trying to gain more market share it should be ham radio. Like we're all freaking tinkerers. Like you said, you know, we, we should be also having hardware from the manufacturers that are, that allow us to tinker more and be able to do that open standard stuff. But I don't know, I don't know maybe that, I don't know what you're feeling on that. <laughs> well, so, uh, as, as an avid, uh, shark tank fan, uh, I, I see a lot of times, you know, these, these businesses, they have really great ideas, but they have really poor execution and, and they're just not really good at playing with others. Right. And I, th I think that there is an existing solution there where you patent your intellectual property. And mm -hmm. then you say, okay, now anybody that wants to use this, just give me a cut, you know? Yeah, and, it, and it's just that simple. Like mm. play, do you think play together, simple? you know, play <laughs> yeah. together. Well, did you see, I don't know if you saw K Murder. This is a sidebar again. We're at another right hole going down here, but um, you see K Murder's latest video about, um, you know, helping out uh, who's the guy who developed the Farajay. I can't remember. His no, name. I haven't seen that one. He put out a video because the guy who developed the Farajay was curious as to whether or not he should go through that patent process of patenting his Farajay. And then everyone's oh. like, ah, oh, you should, you know, you should blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you can't really because you're using an existing design. But at the same time, it's like, why create a patent? You know, you should really just get the patent pending thing just so you have a, at least a leg to stand on. Because if you, I guess the patents today are worth shit in terms of trying to chase them down and get, you know, proprietary well, you gotta, payments on. Yeah, you got to get lawyers and whatnot to, to fight the yeah. knockoffs. But I don't know. Do you have you have a good set of lawyers? I assume you because I, I like to borrow them <laughs> because I don't have my own <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> I haven't had a I, I haven't had a need for a, a lawyer <laughs> since my divorce in 04. So well, there you go. <laughs> and even then, he probably couldn't help you with patent law. No. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of it was an interesting video. Uh, you know, if you head over there. We'll put it in the show notes. But uh, he was talking a lot about the patent stuff, which is I think kind of one of the big things a lot of hams I'm sure struggle with with you know kind of coming up with something like this. It's like oh my gosh, well if you developed it. You know, what would you have to do to be able to kind of keep your IP under control? Because in essence, it's a lot of investment, a lot of time involved with it. And, you know, that's what you hear from folks like the guys like Flex all the time. Oh, we had to spend a lot of time and ramp up and design. And, you know, I remember a few other guys in our club, um, you know, when I was always complaining about why the heck can't Yezu come out with every, you know, at least two years, a new radio? Why is it every five years? And he's like, oh, well, they got to catch up on design and development costs. And I'm like, Really, like it, it takes that much these days to be able to design and develop a radio that they've tweaked just a little bit, you know, like, come on, like, do they have to hire 14 consultants to come up with like, hey, let's make the display a little bit better, <laughs> you know, <laughs> why? Or, or not, not even better, just slightly bigger. Right, exactly. Slightly make the make it the bigger so we can use words like big, you know, big, 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 you know, and everyone will buy it. Like, oh my gosh. Like, and you know, nevertheless you should spent on marketing. But yeah, that's my <laughs> another story for another time, I guess. Uh yeah. Now, I, speaking of speaking of ham genuity and, and K murder, um, I gotta say I, I, I watched the the two videos on the uh, solar panel extension cords. Oh, okay. Um, amazing i love the 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 data collection that he did i love the, the the fact that he was willing to put a little bit of money out there right and and he i think at one point he explained that like had he bought the proper cables like it would have cost him about the same as all of the <laughs> all the stuff he bought <laughs> well that's that's his <laughs> typical ham right you know instead of the buy once yeah. cry we'll spend gazillions of dollars getting to the point of the buy once cry <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought he did a great job with, uh, you know, uh, just showing us the, the actual data and, and how it all worked out and, um, yeah. you know, yeah, in I, interesting to see, like, I, I'm with you. I haven't had a chance to catch up his follow up video. I did see that one out recently and we, we refer to him as K murder for all of our folks that might not know him, but he is, he's officially called the ham radio tube, you know? So just, you know, also known as incurring to Frank, um, K eight MRD radio stuff. So. Um, you probably can find him in both places, but he's more known ham radio tube and he's got a good channel. And I, I think the solar stuff too is, you know, it's right up his alley. It was really cool to see 
um you know the the the, the total volume was a um from a 10 gauge to 12 gauge or whatever one one odd or i can't remember what cable he was using but he was using like a regular like 12 gauge electrical cord wasn't it yeah but he was using all three wires oh so yeah oh. so one 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 uh 100 foot cord was um 12 and one was 10 mm -hmm. and and the difference between them was negligible i think it was yeah. uh you know maybe a maybe an amp oh well then but even then it was still a lot of loss anyway based off the length of it right i think it was like the the, the total mm -hmm. length was the problem no by the time by the time he did the second round where he did all three wires in the in the extension cord all connected together mm -hmm. um the the losses were super minimal even even over the 100 feet run it was it oh was, wow uh, yeah uh, two amps at most what oh wow i saw his first one and he had definitely had a lot more uh loss over a period of time but uh yeah that's oh, cool no, oh, that's promising. <laughs> Not that I'm going to be running a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> those types of scenarios here. Uh, if anything, I put something permanent in. I'm going to have to put something permanent in, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, so, uh, you know, I, I, I was interested in it because, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos on um, solar backup solar. setups and, and, you know, keeping things charged in the field. And, um, you know, I've got a bank of four batteries uh, that I, I have in my boiler room. My boiler room mm -hmm. is just off the shack here. Um, and you know, so those are always connected to, you know, a commercial charter, but should the power go out for an extended period of time, those batteries are running my heat and hot water. And so oh, I well. want to be able to throw the solar panels out in the backyard and run a cord through. And so for me, that was perfect because it's like, all right, well now I know what I need to do to make these cords. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, you should look. Uh, you stuck to the great old Ryan there. He has done a full solar setup on his own. Have you seen his or seen pictures of his solar setup at all? I've seen pictures, and I mean, he did all that himself. That's all when of he his does kind it, of. He does it right. Yeah, we all know Ryan is a buy once, cry once. This is kind of where we, we, we you know, we have heard this slogan, and uh, he's applied it uh, very efficiently and very well. Um, but uh, yeah, he he did a full whole solar setup, and I think you know he's feeding it all back to the grid and, you know, pretty much living, you know, happily not uh, paying a dime for electricity. But um, yeah, his, his solar setups are pretty slick and, uh, you know, kind of inspired me, but being in an HOA, I can do zero. <laughs> like if I put a solar panel, I'd have to drag it out every day to be able to make it worth the effort. And even then it's probably not worth the effort. So I, I run some like yourself, a little bit batteries, but uh, I'm all a generator and, and uh, dyno fuel when uh, the power goes out. So <laughs> <laughs> so much for so much for saving on fossil fuels i guess <laughs> hey, you know uh i i don't know i, I read a, i read a study once at uh, the actual statistic of how much uh co2 that we as humans put in the atmosphere is less than one percent so mm -hmm. I, I i don't know i i believe the 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 actual scientists and not the uh the hype yeah the nice so. the hype and the naysayers yeah and i actually just noticed that i'm wearing his camera shirts <laughs> it's so crazy that we're talking about him anyway that was not planned i was just half another wearing this one but whatever yeah this is the one of the the og shirts you cannot get these anymore from what i understand and now the ham radios you know ham radio tubes so uh you know it is what it is for you all right well let's kind of put a bow on this and 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 uh kind of give our little last minute thoughts on this because obviously we're not going to be able to take this process anywhere or you know it's kind of a pie in the sky thing for us but uh we want to definitely take jim for submitting uh you know this uh, this comment and and this question and you know if you have a, a question like that and you want to share with us and we you want us to talk about it next episode you know submit it to us you can head over to our website at livefreeandham.com and click our comment form and fill it in there and send it over us anytime um, as long as it's not to ask, uh, you know, what size uh, T-shirts we're wearing and whether or not uh, Ham Radio Clubhouse is our favorite clubhouse to watch. Um, but uh, cool. All right. So how do how do we kind of put a bow on this? You know, what what's your kind of thoughts on it? You know, anything uh, you might want to add to that, or uh, we can just uh, you know put this to rest <laughs> and tell Jim sorry. <laughs> well, no, I, I would say one hundred percent. I I agree with you. Thank you, Jim, for the submission. Um, you know, I think we, we need, we need good feedback from our listeners. Um, and so that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I truly believe though, that it is going to be a third party that's going to come up with the solution to this. And so we just need to figure out what it's going to take and who's really good at, uh, you know, some, some programming 
and, yep. and getting that computer and uh, TNC working together to, to interface with different manufactured vehicles. Uh, but I, I believe that it's possible. So, you know, uh, somebody out there is, is going to, going to hear this and they're going to say, yeah, no, I'm going to work on that. Cause I can do that. Uh, uh, and we'll support Please you, email us. <laughs> I know right? we want to know. We'll support you. We'll rally the troops around you. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, I think obviously the two big giants in the in the 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 whole game itself is obviously the radio manufacturers like Yazoo, Kenwood, and and ICOM, and then you've got the vehicle manufacturers. And so you've got a big feat uh, in front of you to try to figure out how to take that black box, we'll call it, and make it work between both ways and work you know in a way that you know also works with the the uh, cell phone manufacturers and their platforms because God forbid Apple um, doesn't get their act together and start opening things up more. Um, you might see more Android when it comes to, you know, ham radio gear, which, you know, I, I'm okay with, you know, I, I, <laughs> I eventually have to get around to, you know, finding my Android phone and start doing I, uh, Android reviews from ham radio apps. <laughs> That's coming eventually. <laughs> All right. Well, so with that, we appreciate everybody here for listening uh, to live free and ham as always. And we thank you guys for being part of the community. And so remember, if you haven't subscribed, we always ask, you know, what the heck have you been doing? And I'm not keyed up here. Uh, and so, you know, as always, this is the medication and the solution that we want you to take to be able to get over that hump. And so you can connect with us first by heading over to our livefreeandham.com forward slash shop. You need to apply copious amounts of live free and ham swag. Make sure you get the hats, the sweaters, the hoodies, all of that. And once you've purchased all of that, then you can proceed to the next one. And either head over to Apple uh, iTunes to uh, do a review there, or you can even make it more simpler and click that SMS links down in the bottom of our descriptions there and leave us a review. Tell us how good we're doing, how amazing Paul is, even without his beard, you know, because Carlos still has it apparently. Um, and, you know, how we miss Todd for his one show because he's too busy buried in baseball. Um, you know, and as always, you can help support our show if you refuse to do the first two things. Um, you know, can support us through Patreon. Um, we're starting to build the Patreon back up again here a little bit. We're going to hopefully be putting um, some of our pre-release uh, uh, shows there. So if you want to get an early jump on some of that stuff, you know, head over to the Patreon, sign up, become a Patreon member. Or you can just give us a one-time bias of beer links because it does help the show. It helps us get out in the community, helps us, uh, you know, giveaways and all of that stuff. And just keep this channel running so we can deliver some awesome content to you. And as and always... Like beer. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm with you. You know, we are big beer drinkers. Um, so, you know, feel free or scotch, you know, if you want to so step up the level, then, you know, to, uh, Paul can 100%. give you a couple suggestions. <laughs> none of this, none of this uh, tank radio crap. We, we, we want the real good stuff. That's all I have to say, you know, if it, or, or nothing, some right? Glenn Levitt or, or Glenn Fittick. Yeah. 100%. There you go. All right. Maybe even four roses. I've got a little four roses and my bottle's getting empty there. All right. Well, so, bourbon, but yeah. Yeah. True. Right. Well, you know, bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a true, truly Polish and German. So I'm always out to kill myself. I'm not sure why. But um, with that, on a different note, um, you can always reach out to any of our hosts. And you, all of our contact info is over on livefreeandham.com or just like men like Carlos or those guys up north.com. You're all there. We're all at the same happy place. Um, you know, come by. Let us know uh, that you're listening. Uh, and as always, thanks again for listening. And from both Paul and I and Todd and Spirit, 7-3. Seven, 7-3. Three. Seven, three.